Hello, um, my name is Amir Khan, and I uh, went on the trip to Kenya, and it was great because I was the uh, oldest person on the trip by a decade for some, by a couple of decades for at least one person. Uh, so it's good to be the oldest one, so I encourage you to go and be the oldest person when you go. Um, I went mainly um, to help serve Molly and, and Joe and, and you know the work that they do because I'm not a real big fan of kids. You'll hear a little bit more about that a little bit later. Uh, but it was mainly to see, because I, I couldn't understand how they do what they do all the time. And so I thought there was something I could do in that way to help them. Um, if you want to hear about camping and customs and things that are different and the personal attention I got in Switzerland at the, the, their version of the TSA, I'd be glad to tell you about that. But the, uh, the whole trip was really about, for, for me and what I saw God do was for hope and purpose and then some things that we all could do to take action on. Uh, so hope that some verses I selected, um, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 15, nor do we boast or claim credit for the work someone else has done. Instead, we hope that your faith will grow so that the boundaries of our work among you will be extended. And in 1 Thessalonians um, chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, we always thank God for all of you and pray for you constantly. As we pray to our God and Father about you, we think of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and the enduring hope that you have because of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that really is what the staff, um, Molly, and you know, the people at Springs of Hope, that's what they do. They offer a lot of hope to the community. Um, we visit the slums of Rhonda. I think you heard a little bit about that. And there's like no electricity. There are very little electricity. There's dirt roads, some you can't even get through. There's livestock running around all over the place. And the kids play right where the livestock is. And it's just, it's hard to understand how people can exist in those conditions, but they do, and they survive. And there's people like Pastor Ben that are there, and Mary who works in the community, um, and even Jan, a lady that was a friend of Pastor Ben's that we picked up along the way and took into Rhonda with us. They offer that hope to the community, and they offer and show people what God's love is. And so those people now have you know, something different or something better, something to look forward to because those other folks are there. And we were there just to help that along. Um, one of the things that happened that day, we had planned to go to Rhonda earlier, but we got delayed for whatever reason. So at that point, God had a better plan. We were there later in the day to be able to take a lady to the hospital who might not have been able to go had we not been there later. Because um, I think you may have heard Douglas talk about there's only one ambulance in the Kuru. So at least that day, there were two. We got to take at least one person to the hospital. So that was uh, nice that we were able to do that. The other part's about purpose. I saw God um, explain some purposes, or at least start the beginning of that. And so Romans chapter 12, do not copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's perfect will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Again, I wasn't sure exactly why I was going outside of being able to help and support this, um, the staff and Molly. And I uh, met a young man named Tony that works on the staff. So Tony and I, we were just talking, and you know, it, the conversation turned to our family. So he asked me if I was married, and some of you know my wife passed away about two and a half years ago. So he started asking a lot of questions about that. And you know, so I described to him the type of person she was and the things that she was doing. And there was just something that you know, I didn't understand, but I enjoyed talking about what purpose was and how we need to look for and know what God's purpose for us is. And one of the things that Tony, over a couple of conversations over a few days, was able to explain to me was that part of the reason that you know, Cheryl had left earlier than, than we might have expected was because that she was very good, and her, her goal and her job from God was to set things up for a lot of people. And I told him about one of the conversations we had about a month, month and a half before she passed away. We were talking about these things that she literally had put in, in mind to set up, she had gotten certain people to certain places. She wanted to help some people grow up a little bit more. Uh, she wanted some people to be more independent, and she wanted some other things just for people to understand. And all those were done, and she, in the conversation, she said, now the next thing I'm going to do is this, 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 and the other. And Tony said, well, it might be that she wasn't supposed to help those people do that part. They had to do that on their own with God, and if she was there, God's purpose wouldn't have been fulfilled for it. So again, I had never thought of it that way and was glad that she was at least here for the time she was to, to have that purpose. And then the last Saturday we were there, um, again, it was just to do whatever God wants to do to help with the kids. And I'm not a big fan of kids, and you'll hear a little bit more about that. So my job that day ended up being to play with the kids all day long. And that was actually kind of fun. 
Uh, I ran out a lot. Of, ran a lot. And they liked to watch me chase soccer balls and play four square from the steps, and so it was fun for them. I did go in and you know took a rest for about ten minutes on, under the, the the. What I used was that I had to go put on my sunglasses. It was really bright there, but it was good just to serve the kids and to participate with them in their devotions and hear them really praise God, and then understand that from Springs of Hope they are growing up in a Christian home, and they're learning about God, and they all love the Lord, and it was good to see that, and the staff is right there with them, and they're not just a staff. They really act as mothers and fathers to the children. Uh, so I want you all to understand, please, that Springs of Hope isn't just the orphanage. They support the whole community um, in different ways, um, so it, it, they have a big influence there, and, you know, this small little organization is touching a lot of lives, and so there's things that we can do. Um, so the last verse I want to leave you with is Romans 12:21. Uh, you have to understand in Kenya, things don't work even as well as they do here. There, there's a lot of corruption in the government, a lot of obstacles. Um, but Romans 12:21, do not let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. So there's all a piece of good that we can do. We can do it here. We can do it in Kenya. So please think about what your good is that you can do and know that that's one more step in helping God's plan come true. Thank you.